Contrast Paint has been around for about three years now. The range launched with 34 colors and offered painters a new way to tackle their models. Novice and speed painters were given a way to quickly and easily add color to their gray horde, and more experienced painters were given new tools. Over the three years since their release, I've used them as intended, as glazes, through my airbrush, mixed into other paints, and used to create the effects. The versatility of this range is now being expanded with 25 brand new contrast paints, alongside two technical paints that are moving into the contrast range. I've been fortunate enough to receive some early review copies of these paints from Games Workshop, and in this video, I'll be doing a full range breakdown. I'll be showing you each and every paint, discussing the finish and suggesting some uses for them. I'll also be comparing the paints to some of the existing ranges as well, just to highlight a few of the changes present in these new paints. Now I first got my hands on these paints a few weeks ago at a top secret event, which saw myself and a few other content creators try these out for the first time. Here I tackled a few models which I'll be showing you in greater detail later on, but first let's apply some paint. In addition to the new contrast paints, Games Workshop have also reformulated their white scar primer. Many white primers create a gritty textured effect that isn't quite as useful for applying washes and contrast paints. So white scar has been designed to leave a smooth surface ready for your contrast paints to be applied. Now I'm not a huge fan of white spray primers for this very reason, so I tend to avoid them. But this white scar did leave a nice smooth surface behind, which would make applying the contrast paint to them much easier. For each of these paints, I will be applying them to one of these white scar prime bases, which should give you the best idea of the paint's color. I'm also applying them as intended. This is as one thick coat. We're starting off with some Garagax Sewer. Not only is that an interesting name, but it also gives you an idea of the kind of brown we're working with here. The paint is a dark brown. It's similar in tone to Wildwood, but it's a little lighter. It also doesn't have the reddish hue that Saigor Brown has. As such, this makes it perfect if you're looking to tackle wood and leather, but don't want it to be too dark. Sitting in a nice middle ground between the lighter snakebite leather and the darker wildwood. In addition to this, it would also be good for creating streaks of grime like those you'd find on the armor of Nurgle models. While Garagax Sewer works in the same way as the existing range of contrast paints, in the sense that it pulls from the edges and pulls into recesses to create some rough shading and highlights, Black Legion, among a few of the other new paints, is much more opaque and consistent in its coverage. You can see that as I apply it, it appears more like a watered-down strong black paint than the Black Templar contrast that we already have. Black Templar is much more translucent and has that easy shading effect, making it better for creating dark greys rather than solid blacks. Black Legion is a much darker and the easy shading effect is far less pronounced, making it the new go-to contrast paint if you want to get a solid black effect over your surfaces. This makes it particularly useful for adding targeted shading into deep recesses, or more simply, over those joints in power armor. Rattling Grime is another brown in this new range. Where Garagax Sewer is quite rich in tone, this paint is much cooler and a little more washed out. As such, this makes it a good choice for the more subdued paint schemes or for achieving the effect of a rotten, weathered wood. Taking inspiration from its name, it would also make a great way to tackle the grimy fur of Skaven. Next up, we have the Greens, and we're starting off with Mantis Warriors Green. This paint takes its name from the Mantis Warriors Space Marine chapter and their particular armor color. Its green is a little drab, and the paint also has a slightly yellowish hue to it, giving it more of a natural looking green color, making it a good alternative to paints like Deathworld Forest or Elysian Green. As such, this would make it great for use over foliage as a camouflage for Astra Militarum regiments, or over the more naturalistic armies in Age of Sigmar, such as the Sylvaneth and Nurgle Demons. Speaking of Nurgle, mixing this into a little Yuhu glue is a great way to create the appearance of phlegm and mucus. From a drab green, we now move on to the brighter Eldari Emerald. This kind of turquoise green, kind of minty color, is very vibrant. It still has the easy shading effect, but the color is still very intense. This means the edge highlights are much more saturated compared to some of the other contrast paints, which rely on a lighter but more washed out effect 
to create the highlight. The obvious candidates for use are gemstones, but vivid colors like these are excellent for use in tyranid color schemes, especially the chitin of the Pulper Prince's Gene Stealer Cult faction. More generically, if you're looking to create some more lurid concoctions and vials and potion bottles, this is a great option. Go Ripper Flesh does exactly what it says on the tin. It follows a similar line to the existing Orc Flesh contrast paint, but it is lighter in tone, much like the Cruel Boys are when compared to classic Orcs. Being quite a subtle shade, it makes it particularly useful for skin tones, and its subtle green nature is another good option for Nurgle miniatures, such as this Plague Bearer that I painted using the paint. It would also be good for use in green combat fatigues, meaning it could be easily be used in conjunction with something like Mantis Warriors Green for some Astra Militarum minis. Next, we have Carandrus Green, which is more of your classic green, especially when compared to the previous green paints that we've already looked at. This color is quite intense, and while being similar in tone to the pre-existing Warp Lightning, Carandrus Green is brighter. As such, if you like Warp Lightning, but want something that stands out even more, then this is the paint for you. It's great for things that you want to have a glowing effect, things like Warp Stone, Space Marine Eyes, and Psychic Powers. Alternatively, it would also be a great starting point for painting up some Salamander Space Marines. Our final green of the new paints is Striking Scorpion Green. This paint finishes off a trifecta of paints with Warp Lightning and Corandrus Green. But this being the brightest of the three, it's essentially the equivalent of Ethermatic Blue. Naturally, this Apple Green can be used to recreate the armor of the Striking Scorpions, but it will also be great for glowing energy sources, the most obvious of these being Plasma Vents. The yellows are the next paints to look at, with Iron Jaws Yellow being the first. Iron Jaws is a dirtier mustard yellow. It has a slight hint of brown to it, which makes it particularly ideal when you're looking for a more grimy, weathered yellow. Its easy shading functionality is also a little stronger than the other two yellows, making it a good one coat to go for, for yellow areas. So if you want to quickly paint up some weathered Imperial Fists, or you're tackling some particularly detailed areas, then this is a good yellow to choose. The next yellow we have is Bad Moon Yellow. This creates an incredibly bright lemon yellow like with the earlier Black Legion, its shading isn't quite as prominent, leaving you with a flatter color, making it ideal if you want to build up your own shading and highlights. When compared to the existing Iandin yellow, you can see just how much more orange Iandin is, the Bad Moon being more of a pure yellow. Imperial Fist is the final yellow we have in the new range, and is similar to Bad Moon yellow in the sense that the result is more flat, but it has a degree more orange in its mix. It's not quite as dark as Iandin Yellow, though. In fact, if you were a fan of the old Lamenter's Yellow Glaze, with a little Lamia Medium mixed in, this Imperial Fist could make for a good alternative. This brings us nicely to the blue tones, with the first being Croxagor Scales. In terms of finish and intensity, it is very similar to that of Aldari Emerald, albeit being more blue than green. It's basically the minty blue to Aldari's Emerald, minty green. It's also not far off Terrid and Turquoise, but its color is a little more intense and a little brighter. As its name hints at, this paint is perfect for the detailed heavy surfaces of Lizard Men models, but it's also perfect if you're looking to tackle the cloth of your Ossiarch Bone Reapers. Briar Queen Chill is a ghostly grey blue. It's one of the more translucent paints from the range, which means that it benefits from that white base coat underneath. The color is much more subdued and is similar to something like Ulthuan Grey, albeit much faster to apply. This makes it great for your ghosts and pale skin miniatures such as the Ideneth Deepkin. Mixing in a little contrast medium would also create a lighter mix that would be great for adding some subtle shading to white cloth. The second of the cold related contrast paints is Frost Heart. It's quite similar to Talisar Blue, but its vibrancy has been turned up a bit, giving it an electric blue color. Being brighter than Talisar Blue, this is particularly good for taking on glass. Things like lenses, optics, and canopies on your flyers, with the blue giving the effect that the sky is being reflected in them. Pilar Glacier is one of my favorite paints of the range. It's a really pale and translucent blue, which makes it fantastic for ice effects. In fact, one of my more popular videos was an ice weapon video. 
it involved a few steps to achieve that frosty effect, but this paint pretty much replaces that. You can see just how easy it is to achieve this effect by applying some Pilar Glacier over a white base coat. If you like the vibrancy of Frost Heart, but preferred your blue to be a little darker, then Essamon Blue is a good choice. As the name hints, it's been based on the blue armor of the Dire Avengers and their Phoenix Lord, but its uses don't just end there. If you were to turn it down, it's strength a little with some medium. It's a great way to smooth out your blends when you're painting blues. It's an easy way to add a little vibrancy to an otherwise bland looking scheme. Night Lords fans will be happy with this next paint. The very dark blue, with just a hint of purple, of Celestian Blue is the perfect colour for your midnight clad warriors. It's on a similar level darkness as Leviathan Blue, but where it differs is in its slightly more intense colour and its subtle purple tone of course. But even though it is among the darker paints in this range, those edges are still lightened up and the recesses are darkened down, meaning you can either use it alone or really push those details with a few quick highlights. Stormfiend is next, and this creates a darker bluish grey shade. Its result is quite similar to Stegodon scale green base coat, followed up by a highlight of Thunderhawk blue. It's a good paint to reach for if you're painting up Militarum Tempestus in their original scheme, or the Skaven of Clan Scryer. If you've ever used Shage Purple and felt that what you were left with wasn't quite as intense as you'd like, then good news. Leviathan Purple sits at a similar darkness level, but the colour is much bolder and results in a richer purple. Dark Elf players will find good use for this paint, as well as those Tyranid players who field High Fleet Leviathan armies and need a quick way to tackle all of that chitin. It's also a pretty fun alternative colour to any magic or psychic powers that you're looking to create. Luxion Purple, on the other hand, holds the same vibrancy as the Viathan Purple, but is much lighter. In fact, the two would work incredibly well together. You could start off with an all-over layer of Luxion Purple before targeting the darker Leviathan Purple into the recessed and shaded areas. Good uses for these paints are the Forces of Slanesh and the Gene Seal Cold Forces. If you're a fan of that rich wine red that is featured on the Hedonites of Slanesh and the weapons of the Dark Reapers, then Sigval Burgundy is the paint for you. This contrast paint continues the theme of the richer tones that this new range of the paints has demonstrated. Compared to the existing Volupus Pink, it's similar in tone, but it lacks the boldness of Sigval Burgundy. As a trade-off, the highlights aren't quite as prominent, so to get the most out of this, I'd recommend applying your own highlights. Continuing with the Slanesh theme, Dreadful Visage is a very pale, very translucent greyish purple. This means that your undercoat will show through quite a bit, albeit with a subtle purple tone. Naturally, this makes it the perfect for the skin tones of your Slanesh demons, but also be great for that slightly necrotic flesh of zombies and ghouls. The final three of the new contrast paints are the most vibrant of the range. First, we have Doomfire Magenta. The pigmentation is extremely rich, which creates a bright reddish pink. The result is much more flat though, it doesn't quite have the same degree of shading and highlighting that some of the other contrast paints have, a feature that is common to these last three paints. While this paint isn't geared up as much towards the one thick coat and you're done approach, it's an incredibly quick way of getting down a bright paint that you can build upon with highlights and washes. For example, I made good use of this paint over the innards of this plague bearer. Bile Red is the brighter yet much more consistent version of Blood Angels Red. It's a quicker way of getting the result of Mephiston Red over a white base coat without having to apply a couple of thin down layers. Blood Angels Red is much better if you want a more translucent effect, if you're applying glazes over a skin for example, but if you want to get a solid bright red that you can build upon with edge highlights, then Bile Red is the better choice. Griffhound Orange has always been among my favourites of the contrast paints. When I've been looking to create rust effects, it's always been one of my go-to choices. But Griffhound sits a little more on the darker brown side of orange. Magma Draft Thlane, on the other hand, is much more your typical orange. It's bright, fiery, and is just as good for creating flames as it is for resurrecting some Firehawk Space Marines. Which brings me to the final two contrast paints in this new range. Hexray Flame and Nighthorn Gloom, which probably sound familiar because they're being moved from being technical paints and into the contrast range. 
For Hexray Flame, the effect between the new and old seems fairly similar. The contrast version is maybe a little paler, but the difference is very subtle and could simply have been down to the application. Nighthawk Gloom seems to have a little more difference though. The contrast version is very similar, but it is more of a bluish grey rather than the greyish blue of the technical version. So while the result is pretty similar, I wouldn't recommend switching to the contrast version of Nighthawk Gloom halfway through a project. And with that, we're finished looking at all of the new contrast paints. So let's take a quick look at some models that I painted with them. Here we have a gut ripper that I painted during the contrast paint preview event. I began with a white scar base coat and used Ball Red over the skin, Black Legion over the fabric, I enjoyed Yellow for the shield and Garagak Sewer for the wood and the wrappings. As you can see, the red and black paints created a really strong base layer whilst still being faster to apply than Mephiston Red or Abaddon Black. I could then build upon these base coats by adding a few highlights. These were created by mixing together the contrast paint I used for the base coat into some Ashamti Bone. Another model that I tackled with the new contrast paint was this Space Marine. I began with a prime of Wraith Bone and applied a layer of Imperial Fist to start off the yellow. From here, I thinned out some Doomfire Magenta with some contrast medium and carefully targeted this into some of the recesses and more shaded areas. I also made use of Black Legion to tackle those armor joints. And so, with that, we have taken a look at all of the new contrast paints, compared them to a few of the old ones and did a few quick tests of some models. Hopefully this has given you a bit more of an insight into the range so you can see which paints you'd like to add to your own collections. If you'd like to see some more detailed guides using these paints, do let me know in the comments below. I'll include some chapter points to each of the paints using this guide in the description, along with some affiliate links too, if you'd like to help out the channel. So before I go, let me say a huge thank you to those who make these videos possible, my wonderful patrons. Currently, my top supporters on Patreon are Jonathan Hart, Ryan Little, Tim, Berserker, Daniel Dowling, Jake, Jesse Smith, Casper Limburg, Morgan, Mr. Grimm, and Swedsman. So a big thank you to you guys, and if you also support me on Patreon through channel membership, or you just use my affiliates links, then it is the kind hearted people such as yourselves that allow me to fund the tools and paints required to create all of these videos for you. And so until next time, thanks for watching, and goodbye.